A major weather pattern change will be coming to the United States over the next few days, which is going to shift our threat of severe weather substantially for the rest of June. Additionally, our temperatures are going to change dramatically over the next couple of weeks with multiple heat waves on the horizon. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next couple of weeks. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today. And we've actually had some big storms back over in the southern plains over the last 24 hours a little bit of severe weather, especially over in West Texas and even some near San Antonio late last night. And we are going to see even more severe weather today across areas like Texas, Louisiana, and even back up into southwestern Arkansas where damaging winds hail and maybe even a tornado will be a possibility today. But over the next few days, we are going to see a lot of moisture starting to surge out of the Gulf, which is going to lead to a more primed environment for severe weather as far north as the northern plains, the Midwest, and maybe even up into Canada. And this is actually pretty crazy, but the tropics right now are heating up in the eastern Pacific where we actually have two named storms and then we're going to have probably at least one or two more here over the next week or two. Not really anything that's going to impact the United States in the short term, but we may get some moisture that comes up into the Baja California and then eventually move into the Four Corner states and that actually could lead to more severe weather throughout the rest of June. But for the time being, there is a lot of stuff happening in the eastern Pacific and it's only a matter of time until we start to see some tropical systems back over in the Atlantic Ocean. Now let's talk more about the weather pattern that'll be impacting the United States over the next couple of weeks and it'll begin with what's happening right now in our mid-level flow so right now back over in the southern plains we do have a low pressure system that is actually going to bring the threat for even some isolated to scattered severe weather which is going to begin today this will roll into Thursday and Friday across the southern plains and it might even make its way over into the Ohio Valley and the Dixie Alley on the other hand our jet stream is lifted fairly far off to the north it's fairly zonal right now so not really promoting any significant threat of severe weather but on Thursday we are going to get a little shortwave trough that'll move into the northern plains that may allow for a little bit of severe weather back over in the northern plains in the midwest and then this low pressure system will continue to move east towards the mississippi river valley and this should at least lead to an isolated threat of severe weather in the ohio valley tennessee valley and dixie alley on friday by saturday and sunday we are going to have a large high pressure system building across the southern plains and this is going to be what we call the ring of fire where we are basically going to have our jet stream lifted very far off to the north and drier and at least somewhat quieter weather is going to be likely across parts Parts of the southern plains the southeast and also up and down the east coast so this is good news if you want some quieter weather this weekend however as we go into early next week i think things really start to change because as this high pressure system backtracks to the west our jet stream is going to start to dip across the northern plains which should lead to a prolonged period of active severe weather for those in the central and northern plains and the midwest as we go at least into the beginning of next week but i think this will last pretty long at least starting around june 15th and 16th probably running at least through june 20th or 21st first you can see how the jet stream gets a little bit more of a northwesterly flow here this is very typical for this time of the year we usually do see lines of thunderstorms come out of stuff like this where we have our jet stream and as well as our mid-level flow geared out of the northwest this is actually very similar by the way to what we just saw a few days ago with our moderate risk of severe weather in the southern plains we had northwesterly flow so this should be something that we're talking about a lot over the next week or two on the other hand the gfs model is depicting a very large trough moving over into the west coast and eventually crossing into the rockies as we go around the end of next week, which should potentially lead to the threat of a significant severe weather event if this were to happen. And then eventually by around June 20th and 21st, this is where things get a lot more uncertain as that is still about 10 to 11 days out from now. But I do think we are going to continue to see a very active weather pattern, especially in the central and northern plains, the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and perhaps even still the southern plains through the middle and end of June. That is at least what we're generally expecting here for our subnoptic weather pattern. Obviously, the significance of all these severe weather events anytime beyond five days from now is very uncertain, but it does look like we are going to have plenty of severe weather for the rest of June. Before we get too far into today's forecast, we need to take a break and talk about my favorite snack, Chomps. Chomps are a fantastic shelf-stable snack and a great source of protein for any moment. Whether you are out chasing a tornado or watching one from home, you can stay focused without needing to stop and grab something to eat. With bold flavors and zero grams of sugar, you are getting more of the good stuff and none of the junk. That means there is no soy, no dairy, no artificial preservatives, colors, or nitrates. My go-to is their brand new Smoky Barbecue. It gives me a quick hint of that Texas barbecue that I used to enjoy when I lived in Texas, while also being a delicious and satisfying snack. But there are tons of other options as well, including their original flavor and jalapeno flavor. And trust me, you will find a flavor that you will love. 
So what are you waiting for? Head over to Chomps today with the top link in the description below and grab some for yourself and let me know down in the comments below what your favorite flavor is. Now that I am refueled, let's get back to the forecast. And talking a little bit more about our severe weather threat here over the next couple of weeks, let's talk a little bit about our supercell composite. This basically takes a bunch of ingredients and shows us our potential for supercell development over the next week or two. And this beginning with what's happening Wednesday and Thursday. And notice how most of our values are geared towards areas like the Northern Plains and then also back into the Southern plane so we should continue to at least see some isolated scattered severe weather in this area for the rest of this week by the weekend notice how these values start to go a little bit further off to the west and they're also really here in the high plains and all across the great plains where there will likely be some supercells as we go into the weekend and as well eventually into early next week as long as we have some sort of initiator like a cold front or a dry line and i do fully expect that we will have that during the weekend and early next week across the great plains but notice how these values are starting to lift very far off to the north by the middle and end of next week. This indicates that we are going to start to see our severe weather threat start to shift further to the north, which this is again very typical for the middle of June. We usually do see our severe weather threat dwindling across the southern plains in general. We just have a lesser frequency of big severe weather events in those areas, and that is because our jet stream is lifting further off to the north. But we should start to see a higher frequency of severe weather events in the Midwest and the northern plains during the middle and end of June, which means you should start to get ready if you're in those areas for the potential for severe weather over the next few few weeks again nothing major is imminent but you definitely want to make sure that your weather radio is ready to go make sure you're changing out flashlights all that good stuff just make sure you're ready to go in case we do end up seeing some big severe weather events which i think we will again over the next few weeks this is the gfs model our future radar here for the next couple of weeks again we have a low pressure system currently sitting in the southern plains which will bring severe weather today maybe a little bit tomorrow as well in the southern plains that could continue into friday across the southeast but i think most of it will be isolated there will also be a weak disturbance moving across the northern plains that should bring at least some severe weather tomorrow to areas from Nebraska and even northeastern Colorado back into Minnesota, and we'll talk more in detail about that here in a moment. By the weekend, a lot of showers and thunderstorms along the East Coast. We'll also have some severe weather ongoing back over in the High Plains. It should be relatively isolated to scattered, but I wouldn't rule out maybe one day where we do get a photogenic tornado, maybe even a few tornadoes out of one of these events. But in general, it's a little bit too early to tell simply because a lot of it will be because of mesoscale features rather than subnoptic features like a large low pressure system. And then by the middle of next week, I think we're going to continue to see just kind of this hit or miss weather pattern where there will be some areas that see storms and even severe weather and others that don't. And I think a lot of it's going to be based off of, again, mesoscale features rather than a large scale low pressure system. I really think that changes, though, by the end of next week. I think we're going to start to see some bigger storm systems here across the northern and central plains in the Midwest. And we should end up seeing the threat here for actually some more organized severe weather events. I really think over the next seven days or so, it's going to just be a lot of localized events that are not really coming from large scale low pressure systems but that should really change during the third and fourth weeks of june and you can see the gfs model does show a lot of those events happening back over in parts of the northern plains the midwest and the central plains so again it should start to get pretty active here as we get closer to the middle of june at least for now though it's at least somewhat quieter we're going to continue to at least see some severe weather but definitely not nearly as significant as how we started with the beginning of june and just a heads up we do have a little bit of severe weather ahead for the next couple of days beginning with today which is wednesday we have a trio of marginal threats of severe weather weather one back over in the pacific northwest another one in the midwest and then one back over in texas louisiana and arkansas and a little slight risk that does include houston texas and even back over near san antonio main concern for today will be damaging winds and large hail in all three of our risks however there is an isolated chance for a tornado or two but it's going to really depend on storm mode today i think there's just gonna be too much convection for there to really be an organized threat for tornadoes but i would not be surprised if we get one tornado somewhere back over in southeast texas during the early early to mid afternoon hours and then on Thursday our threat of severe weather will be in two different areas we got one back over in the Midwest in the Central Plains and then another one back over in Texas isolated damaging winds and hail is the main concern with our southern risk I do think that we'll have wind and hail in our northern risk and actually I wouldn't be surprised if we had some significant hail but I also think there's a chance for an isolated tornado back over in South Dakota maybe even in southern Minnesota so definitely make sure that you're staying weather aware have multiple ways to receive warnings there is a low chance of a live stream both today and tomorrow so make sure that you are staying tuned to the channel. So here's the timing for today. A line of thunderstorms is weakening this morning, but we will see more storms fire up during the early to mid-afternoon hours here across southeastern Texas, the biggest concern being hail and wind. But a low tornado risk may exist with any storms that may stay a little bit more discreet or semi-discreet during the early to mid-afternoon hours. I think by around 5, 6 o'clock this evening, things are going to start to quiet down. There will still be plenty of storms out there. Just generally speaking, the severe weather threat should be lower after 6 o'clock tonight. And then on Thursday, the storm
storms will continue to move to the east very slowly. Localized flooding may become a concern there across Texas. Notice that we may have some big storms back over near Houston and even southwestern Louisiana tomorrow afternoon. Biggest concern will be damaging winds and hail. Very low tornado risk out of that. And we may get a few storms that creep their way over into Arkansas, Mississippi, maybe even western Tennessee on Thursday. Generally speaking, if there's any severe weather, it would be isolated hail and wind. Tornado threat near zero for those areas. And then on Friday, a little bit more storm activity is expected, especially back over in the Tennessee Valley. But again, the threat of severe weather is low. And then back over in the northern plains for Thursday, we will likely see multiple supercells try to fire up here across Nebraska, South Dakota, and Minnesota. I think overall, we're just mostly going to be talking about hail and wind. One of the biggest problems for Thursday is that moisture is going to struggle to get to the north. But if we just get enough moisture, there could be an isolated tornado or two, perhaps in this kind of region here in South Dakota and as well southwestern Minnesota. For now, the Storm Prediction Center does not have an outlined risk for tornadoes in this area. But regardless, I still think that there is a low chance of a tornado in this area during the late afternoon and evening. So make sure you are staying weather aware. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. Our next video will likely be tomorrow, but if it is not, it'll be on Friday. So make sure to click the bell icon so you're notified whenever our next forecast comes out. And make sure to go grab yourself some chumps. These things are so good. I'm having the barbecue flavor right now. It's been incredible. I mean, I've literally been eating it this entire video. And once again, you can check these out with the top link in the description below. They're so good. And once again, we'll see you guys all again in the next forecast.